Yeah. There you go. So, um, the spirit earlier this week hit me with the importance of sharing a message that is about apostasy. It's a, and it's about returning and repenting and charity. I am. I. I was given to teach about char about charity towards the apostate and towards those. And and this is a message for those. It's a message for those who have apostatized. It's those who are trying to come out of apostasy, and for those who seek to guard themselves against apostasy. So I know, let me uh, maybe just clarify a little bit, but I'm pretty sure you're thinking this. Not apostasy to a particular church, but apostasy from but Yahweh's it, way. This, right? this is why I actually highlighted what the original Greek word that now is meant to be about, that's now, that's currently, that's commonly applied to religion. It's simply a defection or to depart. Right, right. And, but we can depart a church. You can that depart church. An, an you can apostasy. also depart, but you, but the, but the great apostasy is to depart from the way. I agree with you. I'm just clarifying that for people. Yep. So I think when most people hear that, they think of from a church, right? Right. But we're not, we're not talking about a religion. We're talking about, a, we're talking about the way, the set apart life that is supposed to be lived by those who love Yahweh. And if you say you love Yahweh and you do not live the set apart life, you do not follow the law and you say you love Yahweh, then you then you are a liar and an apostate. You need to repent. And now repenting is returning to the law, right? Yes, a re to repent is to return to Torah. So let uh, I I th thought it would be good to begin by going over the basic definition of apostasy. This is according to the 1828 Webster's Dictionary. The original Greek simply means a defection or to depart. Um, the, usually, as you can see here uh, on the screen, it's usually applied to faith or religion. Uh, what are some things that those of us, what are some things that those of us who, who are trying to live the law have to guard against in terms of the in terms of potential apostasy and anyone can answer this question this is this is oh uh, oh you're asking you were actually yeah, this is what are some things what are, no, this okay. is a question. what are some things that we have to guard against as we try to uh, as we try to uh as as we as we attempt to overcome the apostasy of our ancestors in the return to torah well, uh, it just like to start off in general, just get this discussion starting. And in Jeremiah, it talks about how the Gentiles will be sold lies, right? I mean, that's not exactly how it says it, but we I can go look up the exact quote if we want. And um, a, a lot of that has to do with a, a lot of the uh, pagan traditions that were told, yeah. or let me specify a little better, the pagan traditions that they used to celebrate their false gods with that then we have the gentiles have uh, accepted and used as try to transform it and i said try because you can't um right in yeah. yahweh's eyes um and that's the eyes that matter and tried to make it into um celebrations that we like to do on an annual basis and that's a yeah. real big one in, yeah i was uh, i fact, was gonna say I, the false traditions that 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 we have become accustomed to growing up um, and it, it's just while it's just as important and while it's just as important to guard against false traditions it's very important to immerse ourselves in the truth exactly and that helps uh doing that helps us learn what the false traditions are because sometimes we don't know what is false right correct correct i mean we we all of us here have have found ourselves uh, at a point in time in our life where we realized that oh my goodness i i i don't know anything which thing i never had before supposed mm -hmm. right and we've all found ourselves in that situation and then 
Yes, I agree, man, that, that yes, we do need to immerse ourselves. But before we can immerse ourselves in the law and, and, and in the truth, we have to realize that we didn't have the truth. Yes. And, but the, it, but the, and the, only way to, the only way to get to the point where you realize you didn't have the truth is to actually read and study and search your scriptures because it's your scriptures that contain the truth. And, it, and it's the scriptures that are the springboard for the revelations that you will receive from Yahweh. Uh, and so you will you will need it. so we need to study our scriptures as we get in uh, as we're figuring out what the truth is now i'm going to tell you if you are receiving your spiritual nourishment from somebody who tells you that it is okay to celebrate christmas that is probably something that you want to consider that, that is some that is a relationship that you will want to consider very carefully well, and at least not have them be your teacher anymore right. to uh, get spiritual nourishment from. Right. Because right. in the Book of Mormon, it talks about the teachers should be first living the law. And they're, if they're encouraging something that's contrary to the law, they're not living it themselves. Right. right. So, yes. And similarly, if you're if you're. Um, the a lot of the pastors which which preach a reckless love type of Jesus, mm -hmm. um, and they don't teach the Yeshua of the Scriptures. These are probably these ought to be cut off as useless and dangerous branches. They are apostate and will only and only will only mire you deeper in your apostasy. Right, and just FYI for those who don't know, he's Ben's alluding to a quote from Joseph Smith. Right. Yes. Well, that, uh, he's not just making it up. Right. Uh, yeah. It is a quote from. Yeah. Joseph Smith did did say that. So those those who teach things that which run contrary to the Bible, the Book of Mormon, and the doctrine and, and the doctrine and covenants ought to be they ought to be cut uh, they ought to be cut off and set aside as useless and dangerous branches. Yeah, that's a, 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 to, a, a, to paraphrase the prophet Joseph Smith. <laughs> so, so one thing I, I will just say in in general, and we need to be careful of the statement, because any sin that we start justifying will start leading us to apostasy. It's now, a exactly. sin that we then repent of will not. But as in right. DC 121 talks about, if we tried to hide our sins, amen to that man's priesthood, or basically to tie it to, to men and women, their connection to Elohim, right? Now there, Which there, are many there are many people There are many. Not that today. you sin, it's that you try to hide it and right. pretend it wasn't a sin. Right. That's what you try to justify. It. You basically try to justify. Well, there are, and there are right. many people who try to justify their sins, and they do so by teaching that the law was done away. Right, right, and I, 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 and I see they, where that it, clarification it, is needed, but I think that's under hiding their sins. But right, that is a good clarification, right? Yeah, that is that's a good clarification. Thank you. Um, they there are many people today who teach a lawless gospel. In fact, the majority. Of those who we look up to, uh, of those who, when I say we, I'm not talking about us particularly. Uh, this is also reported, so uh, the, the I, world, right? The world in general. Uh, the majority of people that we look up to will teach us that the law is no more; that it was nailed to the cross with Christ. There was a law nailed to, to the cross with Christ. That was the that was the punishment meted out as the law of Moses, which involved the slaughtering of lambs, the slaughtering of lambs daily. Um, that was nailed to the cross of Christ. The um, the rest, Torah was not nailed to the cross of Christ. Torah is all about righteous action, which leads us to what is charity. Charity, the Hebrew definition of charity the, the the charity in Hebrew is setaka, which is a word meaning righteousness. Um, it it uh, refers to the obligation to do that, which is right, just. But the uh, it, in fact, it was not a. 
in fact, this word tzedakah was not applied to the charity of to the giving kind of charity until the um, until the uh, uh, until it was adapted to that use by rabbinic Judaism. Well, so I, I'll just agree just a little bit because pure religion is to take care of the widowed and the fatherless. That's true. Giving, so this goes into tithing. Tithing is supposed to go to a poor person mm -hmm. and not to a rich church to invest in Babylon. Mm -hmm. So part of being righteous is giving tithing. Well, that and that's part goes of the, to the poor. That's but, part of obeying the commandments, which is which is what charity is. Right, so, right. But it's somewhere along the way, and maybe it's because of rabbinic Judaism. I don't know for sure, but um they focused on just giving away money versus um keeping the commandments right right the uh, the ethical obligation to do that which is right just including taking care of the poor and those right. who can't take care of themselves That's, so for some reason they started to focus it. on just that one point and called it charity yeah mm -hmm. uh, but they yeah the the thing is is that the setaka the actual taking care of the widows and the fatherless um the actual taking care of the widows and the fatherless has actually uh, long been considered one of the um, yeah. it's long been considered one of those things which can turn back the judgments of God um, so tithing uh, which can turn back a, the, the judgments of God this is right. of course that is tradition um, not so sure so I, I do see tithing as part of the fifth commandment and the tenth mm -hmm. commandment. Because yeah. one thing that uh, there's part of the tithing you give to the uh, Levitical priests, and then there's a there's a part of tithing that you give to the poor personally. Okay, so yeah. that's another subject, but I'm just letting you know. Yeah. So I the, do believe the, that tithing is part of the fifth commandment and the tenth commandment. Okay. Well, that would that would make sense because it uh, all ties into. The two great commandments, which is love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, might, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Correct. Yes. Right. And so the, and so we have this Hebrew definition, the Hebrew word of, of tzedakah, which actually is found, that root word is found in the name of the first, in the name of the great high priest, Melchizedek, um, the uh, king of righteousness. So, um, so the thing is, it's about keeping the commandments just as much as it is about helping other people. Well, we have helping other people is a part of the commandments, right? It is a commandment. Which uh, I find it interesting. In Mosiah 18, uh, Alma the elder felt like it was such a big deal at the time when it came time to baptize people. He focused on that part of the law of, you know, mourning with those that mourn, comfort with those people. who need and comfort. Uh, and I think that he the focused I... on that part. But in there, even Mosiah 18 brings out how we're supposed to, when we um, make the covenant before we're baptized, it's covenanting to keep all of Yahweh's commandments, but he did yeah. decide to focus on that part of well, and I do believe others, that the reason right? I do believe that the reason why the emphasis on helping others in that section is because it actually uh, it actually runs against our natural man completely because we tend to be very survivalist. That the, makes, that the makes natural sense. Man. And that makes so sense. it it mortifies it, it putting other people's needs on a par with our own mortifies the natural man. And so, oh, right. it, you it, which makes us more man. likely, which actually makes us more likely to be able to keep the rest of the commandments. Sure, sure, because we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, so we have to rely on Yahweh more. That's right. So behold, and so here we go, and this and there's this there's the scriptural, and here's something on the from the from the Book of Mormon, talking about um, in Second Nephi twenty six verse thirty, it's. Uh, the, uh, talking about charity behold the lord hath forbidden this thing wherefore the lord god hath given a commandment that all men should have charity which is to keep the commandments which charity keeping the commandments is love according to john 14 15 if you love me keep my commandments 
And except they should have charity, which is to keep the commandments, they were nothing. Wherefore, if they should have charity, i.e. keep the commandments, they would not suffer the laborer in Zion to perish. They would take care of the poor. When we're keeping the commandments, we're taking care of the poor. When we're taking care of the poor, we're keeping the commandments. The two are actually connected. And so the, so the point is, charity is about keeping the commandments. And I'm going to go, and I'm going to, and I feel to go from there to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 through 7, where we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about charity. We're going to find out where all these words, where all these, where all these descriptors of charity come from. We're going to find out that most that all of these descriptors of charity are actually commandments of Torah. And if only even if the even if only in the fact they are a description of God, which Torah is designed to help us become like God through the denial uh, through the denial of the man of sin. So, um, Zach, you want to read First Corinthians thirteen four through seven for me here? Sure. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not. Is not puffed up. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own. Is not easily provoked. Thinketh thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, helpeth all things, endureth all things. Okay. And so, like I say here in the next little bit there, all these are commandments of Torah. Um, so just, well, just on that real quick, all things is a key word for Torah. And I'm, uh, that's, that uh, I'm going to get to that. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to get to that. So first, let's go into each one of these. Uh, let's go into each one of these things here. Let's see. Charity suffereth long. Um, Josh, you want to read Exodus 34, 6? Sure. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Long-suffering is a trait of god and Number. torah teaches us how to be like elohim right yes it is a trait of it is a trait of elohim uh but what is long suffering it's more than just patience oh uh, well we're we'll we'll get uh, uh, yeah it's it is more well, than just it, patience is it okay if we do a little sidetrack and go to the dictionary ben yeah let's uh, I'll, I'll i'll get that up okay let's see uh, Okay. Because I know a lot of people like to equate long suffering with patience, but it's, I know it's more than that. Yeah. Well, there's Way two things. I, I would suggest maybe we look at the 1828 dictionary. And that's what I'm and, going That's where I'm uh, going. Look at Bible Hub so we can look at the actual Hebrew root behind it. So those are two things I would suggest. 1828 Webster's Dictionary. So, uh, Ben, you need to push your buttons. Oh. Or do you want me to push your buttons? I'll stop <laughs> sharing and reshift and share screen, whole screen. <laughs> At least someone got the joke. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Does everyone see the definition here? Well, I see the definition of buy. Right. Okay. okay. So, but, so you, but you see something, but you see yeah. the dictionary. Yeah, yeah. 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 I see the dictionary. Mm -hmm. Long suffering, bearing injuries or provocation for a long time, patient, not easily provoked. Hmm. Well, one thing I, I think that stands out to me is bearing injuries, meaning when someone's hurting you, you don't um you don't lash hurt. out. You, right. right. You don't you don't necessarily lash out at them and uh try to hurt them back. 
Right, right. Right. You you may start trying to protect yourself, but well, that's understandable. But you you don't try to hurt them back. It's right? it's pretty much the opposite of eye for an eye, ear for an ear. Yeah. Well, uh, so those are Hebrew idioms. We can talk about another time. Oh, I know. So, uh, I know. But, <laughs> but it is different how most people interpret that, right? Right. Because right. that means something different than what most people think it does. Uh, yeah. And let's actually just go. Let's actually minimize this again, and let's go now to uh, open up a new one, and let's go, go to Bible Hub. Bible Hub. It's Bible Hub. Oh, that first link is the church. That's funny. <laughs> I know. Tell me. Yeah, I remember the first time I ran into that. I, I they they suckered me in because I wasn't expecting it. Um, <laughs> so uh, go up to Genesis, and I think it was in Exodus, right? It's in go top left. Exodus thirty four six. Uh, let's go here, Exodus. Go to Exodus thirty-four. Exodus. Oh, hold on. Did X? Okay. Thirty-four. And we go to verse. Come on, there we go. Six. Okay. Let's see. And this is interesting. And now it says compassionate and gracious, slow to anger. The King James Version says, The Lord, the Lord, merciful and gracious, long suffering, long suffering, slow to anger. And this is, there's two different words there. Well, go to the interlinear. Yep. Interlinear. And. Huh. Ah, slow, Eric. Let's go. Let's well, pull do that the number. Up. The number one works better. Okay. Pull that up in a new tab. And that is long. That the definition of the word Eric Eric is so long. This would be long time, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. And they get slow to anger, slow to anger, slow to anger. All right. of those are all those scriptures that it's used in are about it be, the Lord being slow to anger, long suffering. All right. So go back to Exodus 34. Let's go find the other Hebrew word. Okay. Let's go back here. And the other word to anger, apayim. Uh, numbers better. Yep. And we'll put flip that up. Uh, nostril, nose, face, anger. And so yeah, it literally means slow to anger there. I sweat no, up your it, face. It's, it's funny though, it's a, it's associated with the nose, right? Yeah, because when, you, when you're angry, to... when you're angry, your nose with a lot of people when they're angry, their nose flares up. Yeah. Right. Well, nose has to do with trust. Yeah, when you so, lie, trust is lost, like with Pinocchio, right? But, yeah, and his nose just kept and, and when you're and angry, and it's because you don't trust what the person did was in your in their your best, interest. Your best benefit, right? That they weren't right. seeking to help right. you. It, it, this has to do with trust. You get angry when you don't trust someone. Yeah. Yes. So and so that so that was so that was that was informative with regards to long suffering. Is that um, you're slow to anger, slow to break trust. Mm -hmm. Now you can get angry because Yeshua did get angry, right? Yeah. Well, he did, in the Old yes. Testament and in it, the New yeah, Testament. The, the, the word, the key word being slow. Slow to anger. Yes, that is a key um, word. So let's go into the next. Uh, but verse. also, don't let your anger control you. Okay? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Uh, Debbie, do you want to read Numbers 14, 18? You're muted if you want to read, Debbie. 
Okay, I'm, let's see. I don't know. I I don't. If you can't read it, that's I just, you highlight it. Then it. highlight it so she can highlight it. I can't. I there we go. Can you read it? Um, uh, let can me see it? here. Yes, the Lord is long suffering and of great mercy, forgiving iniquity and transgression, and by no means clear. Let's see, clearing the guilty, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation. So here, while he's talking about the long suffering and mercy of the Lord who forgives iniquity and transgression, those who haven't repented are still guilty. Right. Mm -hmm. and the, they the, are not clear. So the mm -hmm. last part where it brings out how he, he visits the iniquity of the fathers upon the children, third and fourth generation, is because for three and four generations, they keep breaking Torah the same mm -hmm. way. Right. Mm -hmm. it's because the children are taught by their fathers. To as it were. Torah. Yeah. Right. Because even just, just before, it talks about how he forgives iniquity and transgression but those are those who with the broken heart and contrite spirit who are are repenting yes right makes sense otherwise okay. they're still doing the same sin and it's typical that the sin stays within a family for three to four generations yeah yeah before you find somebody you can actually break the generational curse as it were right yeah. um Let's see, Stephen, do you want to read Psalm 86, 15? Yep. But thou, O Yahweh, art thou an Elohim, or judge, full of compassion, and gracious, and long-suffering, and plenteous in mercy and truth. Mm. All of this, on the nature of God, how long-suffering is in his nature, and how... It, and the commandment from Torah is to love God. And if now, we love one, God, we want to be like him. One thing I think is important to bring out with this verse and what we're seeing here, the compassion, mercy has to do with forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Right? And, and, it has everything to do and that has to go along with the long-suffering subject that we're on right now. When you yep. forgive people, you're able to be long-suffering. Right, mm -hmm. you don't get angry when you forgive. Nope. So, um, Brennan, do you want to read, or do you just, or, or do you just want to hang out? Uh, so, um, Ben, let's pause for one second, okay? Okay. Okay. So, Kelsey, would you like to read Alma chapter seven, verses twenty-three and twenty-four? I will. Let me get there. Twenty-three and twenty-four. Yeah, 23 and 24. Okay. And now I would that ye should be humble and be submissive and gentle, easy to be entreated, full of patience and long suffering, being temperate in all things, being diligent in keeping the commandments of God at all times, asking for whatsoever things ye stand in need, both spiritual and temporal, always returning thanks unto God for whatsoever things ye do receive. And see that ye have faith, hope, and charity, and then ye will always abound in good works. Something that stands out to me here is how closely this corresponds with Paul's, um, with Paul's definition, uh, with Paul's um, explanation explanation of what charity is, <laughs> and, and so it's basically delivering this. He's basically delivering the same message, but I think that it's important here he's 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 entreating people to be full of patience and long suffering which as we read in the previous three verses long suffering is one of the primary attributes of god and is one of the primary attributes of yahweh and um, so right and, and, and so one thing i want to bring out how alma is saying do these things where paul says if you're keeping torah aka spirit which another better definition i would say in this case is behavior you will have these things right that is correct that is correct so he's saying and so he's saying that if you if you're exhibiting the behavior of charity you will have these things you will be these things will abound in you um and so the behavior and the behavior of charity is that we keep the commandments 
Um, mm. And so, uh, Mosiah, okay, Josh, you want to read Mosiah 27, 33? Sure. But notwithstanding all this, they did impart much consolation to the church, confirming their faith and exhorting them with long suffering and much travail to keep the commandments of God. So long, so long suffering seems to be one of those things that's actually key in doing the Lord's work. We have to be not, we have to be slow to be offended. So um, are you okay if we sidetrack and look at travail in the dictionary? In the quick? dictionary? Not at all. Not at all a problem. I don't mind at all. Travail. To labor with pain or to toil. Uh, or to her uh, also. Well, you've skipped one. I, I'm sure the, the women can help us understand this one a lot more than we can, right? Yeah, to suffer the pangs of childbirth, to be in labor. Yeah, I, I'm I'm sure that's hard. Yeah. Uh, to her Which, just FYI, to go along with that, the second coming or the days before the second coming talks about as the days of childbirth. Right. Yeah. So we, we, we do need to go through the travails. Right. Anyways. Yes. Um, and also uh, the verb transitive to harass, to tire, as trouble sufficient to travail the realm. Uh, then this labor with pain, severe toil, the noun. As everything of price, so does the so doth this require travail, and I think there it is being used. Let me. Let, how well, is it? Being, I think it's bringing it out price. that um, the culture is hmm. going to really test us, right? Yes. Yep. Yep. And, and here it's definitely the culture being is going to try to make it hard for us to keep. Uh, Yahweh's Torah, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's going to it's going to run against the it's going to run it runs against the grain. Yes. But uh, notwithstanding all of this, they did impart much consolation to the church, confirming their faith and exhort. This is what a teacher does. Yeah, confirming their faith, exhorting them with long suffering and much travail. To keep the commandments of God. This is what a true teacher will do. These are the teachers that you need. These are the kinds of teachers that you need to feed your spiritual life. You not mean not the ones that just tell you everything's okay, whatever you feel like? Right. Yeah, they, uh, not the one, not the ones that teach you to do as thou wilt. Or what uh, about the ones that tell you to get false revelations? The ones the ones that tell you that knowledge is more important than uh Look, man, obedience? just go with the heart. Oh, wait, wait, wait. What does the scripture say about the heart? Oh, yeah. It's the, it's, I knew you were... it's wicked. the heart is a liar. The heart is wicked. Yeah. It's treacherous. Yeah, but you should, you should just follow your heart, man. The heart well, will never. You want to follow treacherous <laughs> ways? I mean, I, I guess you'll get your reward. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, you will. Yeah. yeah. Might not be happy about it, but you'll get your reward. Oh, no, you won't because you'll be gnashing and, and there will be weeping and wailing and gnashing and gnashing and wailing of, and wailing of your yeah. teeth. Right. Yeah. And I'm and I'm pretty sure that uh, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that there's that not all the weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth is going to be by those who, who have received the punishment. Yeah. I'm I, I myself know of more than a few people who I will be who right now I'm right now I hope they return and they return can I just make a quick comment and then I have to go but yeah I'll be quick so a good example of long suffering and travail and when you're teaching was my conversation with my son today on the phone the one who's in prison where he just thinks that climate change is so real and all the things they want to do with digital identity and digital currency and 
smart cities and all these things are such a good thing. And I said, David, I believe that a lot of what's happening in the world with the fires and the earthquakes and the other bad things are happening are God's judgment because the wickedness in the world is becoming so rampant. And he just thinks I'm completely nuts and got so frustrated with me and didn't even want to finish the conversation, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think he thinks his mom is just cuckoo, right? Mm -hmm. And yeah. but, we, but we have to be long suffering and we have to have the charity. We have to continue to keep the Torah. And and I think the, those first few scriptures we were reading are a perfect description of what we're supposed to be like if we want to be like our Heavenly Father and our Savior. So, and it's not always easy. It's not. Mm. No, it's it's not always way. easy. Yeah. But, but, but it's, it's hardly ever easy. Yeah. And but, they treat you like you're crazy and you're nuts and you're, you know, or, but anyway, so. Um, but no, I, I think that's good to point out, Debbie, because if we continue in being long suffering, um, some people, a few of them will change and see yes. the wisdom of what we're saying. And we need to do it. And we need to do it for Yahweh and for those few who will listen. Okay. Yes, and I'm hoping my children will be among those, but they definitely, right. I mean, if I get angry back or something, but no, I have to be patient and kind and loving and long-suffering and all those things. And yes, there's some travail involved, but <laughs> yeah. Yeah, to, yeah, that's for sure. You just continue. So I really needed this lesson tonight. Thank you, Benjamin. Yeah. Well, I, I hope you've drawn I hope you've drawn some strength. Um, yeah. the, 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 the thing is, is the rest of this lesson will be recorded. So you will be Thank able you. to you will be able to have it to share with other people who may need okay. who, who may also who may need a wake up call. OK, that thank is, you. That for me is the purpose of getting this out here as uh, in this form. People need to wake up and realize that if they wish to be with the Lord, that they need to walk in his mind and will, and which exactly. is given to us in Torah. A lot so, of people don't understand that. They, I mean, my boyfriend is a good example. Well, I just think if you just try to be a good person, it's all going to be okay, right? Well, well, <laughs> you know, that's the thing is that you can always then show him that uh, well, there's no, but they, here's they, But here's... Here's the thing, right? With that, with that statement, who says what good is? Exactly. That's Torah exactly. does by Yahweh. Well, yes, right. I, I understand that, but in the context that's being talked of here, just try to be a good person. What does that well, mean? The what the world terms yeah. as good changes from day to day. Exactly. Yeah. Moment yeah. to moment, even. Yes, well, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly so well thank you so much and hopefully i'll see everyone next week <laughs> yeah. well, okay. that, uh, well we, we hope to, we love seeing you here oh Shabbat thank Shabbat you. Debbie. good night everyone thank you okay i so that, only have a few moments left so so let's so let's kind of get into the next one a little bit okay yep so the next one, charity suffereth long and is kind. Kindness. Psalm 3121. Zach, you want to read that? Yeah. Blessed be Yahweh, for he has shown me his marvelous kindness in a, in a strong city. Yes. You know, one thing... I, I always, when when people at at work or wherever out in the world say, "Oh, you're really nice," I'm like, "Don't say that to me. Don't don't tell me I'm nice. I don't want to be nice. I want to be kind. I want to be known as a kind person. I don't want to be known as a nice person because nice is the world's counterfeit for kindness." Yeah. Well, here's an interesting thing. What aspect of kindness is being shown in this verse well um one thing that i wonder and, and maybe it's not the right time but i 
What's the technical differences? This is where we get to the dictionary between kindness and nice. Mm-hmm. Because in my mind, I tend to think it, they're the same, but uh, what Josh is bringing out, they're they're not. So it might be good to look at that, right? Okay, well, let's take a look. Let's take a look in relation to what's actually being said. So, uh, oh dear. <laughs> let's see. Bam. Kindness is simply goodwill, benevolence, that temper or disposition which delights in contributing to the happiness of others, mm -hmm. which is exercised cheerfully in gratifying their wishes, supplying their wants, or alleviating their distresses. Benignity of nature. Kindness never kindness ever accompanies love. So according to this, kindness is that which delights in contributing to the happiness of others. There is no managed kindness we may not sometime want or by whose malice we may not sometimes suffer. It, well, I, I think one thing I, I would say is that a, a key thing for me is kindness is attached to love. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it always, let's, it let's always take, let's, accompanies love. Let's now let's look up nice or niceness. You know. Delicacy of perception, quality of perceiving small differences, niceness of taste, extreme delicacy, excess of scrupulousness, or ex, or exactness. Uh, huge difference. Accuracy, yeah. minute exactness. I uh, it or let's take a look at nice so again. One, one thing I'm seeing right now: nice is an outward appearance. Yes. Where Ooh. kindness is where they can sense the love. Right. Yeah. Right. Kindness. Which is why kindness I always tell from, people. Don't kindness call comes me from nice. a real place. I don't want to be known as a nice guy. I'm not a nice guy. For sure. Nice is yeah. superficial. I want to look good. Kindness right. is that you love. Now yes. let's that is that is that is correct. Now let's uh let's swing back around to my question. What aspect of kindness is being shown? He showed me his kindness, his marvelous kindness in a strong city. What aspect of kindness is being shown here? So I I, I think well, first of all, let's just find a strong city. Um just uh, we'd have to go read the whole Go look at this, right. that uh, chapter, but I'm inclined to think that a strong city is a mean city, right? Mm. Let's take a look. Okay. Like a rough city? Like a, yeah, yeah. rough. Yeah. Mm. Let's take a look. That's Psalms. And that is which one? 3121. Okay. 3121. <laughs> Numbers. 31. Huh. Keep going down. There you go. There it is. Boom. Okay. There we are. Strong in a city is kindness. Yeah, it's shown. Let's go look okay. at the Hebrew root under strong. Okay. Siege enclosure, siege entrenchment. So yeah. the kindness is deliverance. Because that, that strong city is a besieged city. Well, so defense, fortified, fortress, rampart, siege, entrenchment. Yeah. So let's go look at some of the verses. Let's look at some of the you. other verses. Let's. Okay, where is the main? Where I can actually get the other. What are you looking for? Well, no. I'm you actually looking multiple, for. You want the normal page? Yeah. It's the multi. Okay. Okay. So. 
No, that's not going to work. That, oh, that's... okay. Well, just hit the main page. Go Bible Hub and just do Psalms 31, 21 again. Yep. Uh, uh, you're in Genesis. Yeah. <laughs> that would take a while to scroll down. That's not, <laughs> that's, that's not gonna. <laughs> Especially Psalms, right? Oh my goodness, yeah. Well, uh, let's take some take a look at some verses around thirty one twenty one. You hide them in the secret place of your presence from the schemes of men. Conceal them in your shelter from accusing tongues. Blessed be the Lord, for he has shown me his loving devotion in a city under siege. In my so life. especially looking at it's really verse, talking about yeah. uh verse twenty, it this is like uh, uh around mean people. Right, using yeah. mm -hmm. yeah. tongues that that's like Satan people because Satan is the the accuser that's always looking at a way to uh show how you're you're wrong and you you're evil and here we are and, and here we are in feel bad right and here we are in verse twenty two in my alarm I said I am cut off from your sight but you heard my plea for mercy when I called to you for help. Yeah, so this is that part I think is going more along the lines how I'm a sinner, but you're merciful unto me, right? Mm -hmm. Which yep. goes along. This is kind of like an A B A B type of thing going on here, right? Yep. yep. Um, so I, I do think I my my initial guess that the strong city is uh, a city of mean people, right? Uh, so the and so the kindness that we're talking about, it, that kindness is shown in uh, sheltering, in in, uh, in in providing comfort for us in times of, in times of need. Right, like Bob, right? He provided shelter for the strangers, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, he always kindness, and oftentimes we can be the instruments for showing always kindness. Mm-hmm people yeah um, and that's actually a, that's actually the commandment is that that's why we need to be kind yeah Yahweh is kind um psalm 117 verse 2 for his merciful kindness is great toward us merciful kindness this is his forgiveness this is his atonement and the truth of the lord mm -hmm. endureth forever praise ye the lord the truth of the Lord, Torah, endureth forever. Praise ye to the Lord. Yeah, this is like endure to the end, right? Do what is yeah, right. I, I think it's awesome follow. the way that verse is formulated. Mm -hmm. It puts the ends and then the means to the ends in the same short verse, right? Yeah. It's merciful kindness towards us, the atonement. Correct. Yes. And then Absolutely. and then the means by which we stay within the atonement, which is the Torah. You yes. keep Torah, you stay within the atonement, you stay within the law, and it endures well, forever. And and therefore you are no longer under the curse of the law, but you now live in the in spirit. The law. In right. The and and so to law. go along with that, this verse has an A B A B. And yeah. both B's have to do with the truth and Torah. Mm -hmm. they're, they're praising Yahweh for his Torah to help us resolve these issues, right? Mm -hmm. And here we that's go. Just, that's beautiful. That's the, that's like some of the most beautiful writing like ever written. Yeah. In my opinion. I, 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 yeah. I, I, they, they, it's been attributed to our ancestors, by the way. Yes, I know. Psalm 119.17. But it's some of the most beautiful writing ever written. I mean, it really yeah. is. Psalm 119.76. Matt, you want to read that? Let I pray thee thy merciful kindness be for my comfort, according to thy mm. word unto thy servant. Mm. So similarly, as Yahweh shows, uh, as uh, Yahweh, as Yeshua extends mercy to us, we need to show merciful kindness 
towards those who are in need and let not their petition come up to us in vain. And not uh, only that in the same way that, that in the same way that our 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 petition is, does not come up to Yahweh in vain should we repent. Zach, you wanted to know how one gives mighty prayer? Yeah. Read Psalm 119. And that is the perfect example of mighty prayer. It's also the perfect example of a chiasm. Exactly. But anyway. Uh... <laughs> yeah, it's a chiasms with lots of subchiasms, right? But anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Psalm 141.5. Uh, Kelsey, do you want to read that for me? Okay, let's see here. Okay. Sorry, I have my dog jumping in my face. Just saying. It. <laughs> <laughs> dog uh, needs love too, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah he definitely does. <laughs> let the righteous smite me. It shall be a kindness. And let him reprove me. It shall be an excellent oil, which shall not break my head for... Yet my prayer also shall be in their calamities. And that actually reminds me of a verse in Leviticus 19. Uh, right. So one thing, maybe just that while you're getting that up, is, is saying uh, reproofs are kind. And it, as in takes love, as we talked about earlier from the dictionary, right? Mm -hmm. It takes really loving someone to help them come to the right way versus letting them stay in the wrong way. Right. That actually takes a lot of love. Yeah. Cause uh, sometimes you'll get a lot of disrespect that you really have to love someone to be willing to put up with that disrespect. Right. Here we are in De Deuteronomy uh, or in Leviticus 19, 17. Thou shalt not hate thy brother in thine heart. Thou shalt in any wise rebuke thy neighbor and not suffer in, and not suffer sin upon him. If we do, if we see that our neighbor is sinning and we don't say anything to spare their feelings, we hate them, and we right. need to repent because we're not worried about the their eternal salvation, right? Mm -hmm. We, we do not hate, have that love in us. We, if we do not, re, if we don't do not rebuke our neighbor or our brother, or whoever, it, if we do not rebuke the person in sin, we do not love them. We so it, it is a real friend that will talk to you and let you know you're doing something wrong, then let yeah. you continue in the way. Right. 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 Um, and so even exactly. society and it's also, knows this. That's a kindness, if you think about it. That is a kindness. Correct. Yeah. So, so in, in a sense, society knows this because they do it on other aspects. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Yahweh's Torah, they think it's, oh, it's forbidden to do it there, but they'll do it on other things. Yeah. yeah. So this is so this gets into what it means. This gets into this part of the practical level of kindness that we don't think of as kindness, but that is actually one of the greatest kindnesses that we can actually render to our brothers and sisters, which is to let them know that they need to repent. Yeah. Uh, but sadly, most of them take it harshly. Um, well, uh, yes, yes. Well, the the it's because it it stings, right? The guilt stings, and mm -hmm. people don't like hurting, and so they and so when they're guilty and they know they're guilty, but they don't want to give up what it is they're feeling guilty about. Then yes, you get that angry reaction. No, yeah. yeah, it's their pride coming to place, that, trying to make it look like they did nothing wrong. It's not my fault. It's your fault. Yeah. yeah. And so that is that is charity as kindness. Charity envieth not. Now the commandment. I'm sorry. I'm that. sorry. Before we get any further, I just I, I have to go. 
Um, okay. But this has been awesome, and I'm definitely going to watch the uh, the uh, the video when it comes out and cool. all that good stuff. So, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. So, the commandment behind charity envieth not is pretty self-evident. Let's go to uh, Exodus chapter twenty, verse seventeen. I happen to have I happen to have it here. Uh, you mean that's one of the like pretty simple Ten Commandments, maybe? Yeah, it's uh, it's actually not hard to figure out how the how how this uh, attribute of charity is actually commanded in Torah. <laughs> uh, that one's pretty so, simple. Yeah. So, uh, Christy, do you want to read Exodus twenty seventeen here? Sure. I will do that. Let's see. Exodus twenty seventeen. It's the highlighted one if you can see the screen. Oh yeah. <laughs> my my eyes went away from the highlighted one. Okay. <laughs> um thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. So I think with a woman reading it, we need to add uh, thy neighbor's husband, right? But anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So yeah, the, the, this one's really simple. Envieth not. Don't covet. Oh, wait a minute. Perhaps all the other Ten Commandments are also implied in this description of charity. Let's go on to see. Vaunteth not itself. Okay, I thought it might be useful to go into the dictionary definition for the word vaunt. And to vaunt is to boast, to make a vain display of one's own worth, attainments or decorations, to talk with vain ostentation or to brag. Pride prompts a man to vaunt and overvalue what he is. It's also to boast of or to make a vain display of. Uh, my vanquisher spoiled of his vaunted spoil. Charity vaunteth not itself to make a boast, a boast or vain display of itself. A uh, vain display of what one is or has or does. Ostentation from vanity. So there we. Uh, so those are the definitions of the word vaunt. It makes it pretty clear that what we're talking about here is uh, pride. Some uh, we're commanded not to have. That we're commanded not to have pride that we're not uh and th and that we're not to boast of ourselves right uh, okay. and that goes along with uh, coveting because if you you're prideful you think you deserve what other people have worked for themselves right yep they, they go uh, you mean that these you mean these attributes actually all go together um i think so absolutely <laughs> what do i know <laughs> <laughs> yeah so Psalm 10, 3. Uh, let's see. Zach, have you read recently? A oh, well, little bit ago. Okay, go ahead. Read Psalm 10. For the wicked boasteth in his heart's desire, and blesseth the covetous whom the Lord abhorreth. Interesting how this verse in psalm actually talks about what Stephen and i were talking about yeah. how they're all interconnected all these discrete all these all these things pride boasting uh covetousness they're all connected and uh they're and uh they're not any they're all commanded against uh and they not one of them is uh not one of them is uh a part of God's character. Right. In fact, it it even here in Psalms 10 3, it states Yahweh abhor abhorreth these things, right? Yes. Whom the whom Yahweh abhorreth. The covetous whom Yahweh abhorreth. So yeah. So why okay, yeah. Stephen, you want to read Psalm 52 1 for me? Yeah. Uh why boastest thou thyself in mischief? As an evil doing, O mighty man, you think you are, 
The goodness of Elohim endureth continually. You can trust in him and to do his ways. Right. So this is the, the it, so, you know, this is also, it, this also goes in line with uh, Moses, with the, uh, uh, with Moses chapter one, where he talks about, surely I know that man is nothing, which, ne which thing I had never before supposed. Mm -hmm. Why boastest thou of thyself in mischief? And so, because right. uh, Egypt was the pinnacle of society in his day, right? Yep, absolutely. Psalm 97 7. I'll read that. Confounded be all they that serve graven images, that boast themselves of idols. Worship him, all ye gods. So, this is a... Those who worship after the manner of the Amorites in whose land we dwell will be confounded. And all will be made to bend the knee before Yahweh. Right. And, and and I think we need to make clear that idols are not just graven images, right? They're no. anything that we put before Yahweh Elohim. Right. And it's also the relig it, it, and it's also false religious practice. The boasting yourself of an idol. It's like, oh yes, I'm a I'm a it's all it could also be your religious affiliation. Oh, I'm a member of the church. I'm good. I'm a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter day Saints. I'm good. Yeah, yeah, I'm saved, or uh, I remember on my mission, right? I'm Catholic, I'm good. Soy, soy Catholico. Right, right. Where they're, they're, they're putting the church over the relationship that you have with Yahweh Elohim. Right? So, this is the, so this is the thing, and that that is what is defined of as, that is what can be defined in the modern times as boasting yourself of idols. So we need to we need to put those things away from us and focus on worshiping Yahweh as he has prescribed in his word. Instead of boast so that we so that we can uh, like Ammon boast in our God, not in our own righteousness. Proverbs 27 1. Uh, let's see. Kelsey. All right. I'm on it. Let's see. Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. So this is all, all against boasting. Uh, we, we are commanded not to boast. Well, right here. I think part of what this brings out is you might be rich today, but you might not be rich tomorrow. Right? Exactly. So you, you, you don't boast of your don't don't make yourself out to be that you're this rich person because you might not be rich tomorrow, right? That's right. So we are so and and really it's a very and that is very a very potent instruction. You know, it's all it goes hand in hand with what. Yeshua himself said while he was alive, when he said, uh, sufficient is the day for the evil thereof. It's on the flip side of that same instruction. Mm -hmm. For people will, uh, people will, uh, people, people expect their good fortune to continue forever, but the Lord causes the sun to shine and the rain to fall on the just and the unjust alike. Yeah, yeah. And so I'm just going to interject a little bit, but I, I know there's a lot of religious people who like to claim that they're being righteous simply because they're being blessed. So that's proof that what they're doing is right, despite the fact it's going into within the scriptures. But in the Sermon on the Mount, it states that Yahweh blesses the wicked. So just because you get a blessing doesn't mean you're being righteous. It means that God, that God's calling out to you in love today. Yeah. It, and that it could be an anger tomorrow. All right. But it's no proof of your righteousness. 
That's Absolutely. what I'm getting at, right? Absolutely. Let's see. So, charity, charity envieth not, charity fawneth not itself, is not puffed up. And when I think about puffed up, I think about uh, puffed rice, actually. It becomes larger than it is, filled with hot air and pride. And filled with hot air. Now the uh, and similarly, we get filled with hot air when we are proud. Sometimes you get filled with hot air just because of the love of the Lord within us. But many of most of the time, a lot most of the time when we're full of hot air, a lot of a lot of times it's because we're proud, and uh, we uh, we think we're thinking perhaps a little too much of ourselves. So charity is not puffed up. A little bit, uh, a commandment. Uh, the commandment against pride is found. The uh, commandment against pride is found in uh, Torah. is extended in the Book of Mormon. We find it also in the Book of Mormon. Uh, Christy, you want to read Leviticus twenty six nineteen? Yes. And I will break the pride of your power. And I will make your heaven as iron and your earth as brass. So uh, here. Uh, well, one thing I think we ought to bring out is how it says, I'm going to break up your pride. Yep. Right? As in, yep. I, I'm going to show your pride is worthless, right? Yep. Exactly. And that, uh, and uh, if, Pride and that and that and that pride is that kind of pride is outside of the character of Elohim, and therefore it is worthless and will do us no good. It will serve us no good in the long run. All right. Hence, it's going to break it. You're going to get rid of it, right? Show it's worthless. It, it, when we, it's when not the, strong in the long run. Even if the, you think you might, you might be strong now. But it's actually weakness compared to Yahweh's ways. Well, and the whole thing is, is that uh, what Yahweh promises us when we come unto him is that he will show us our weakness. Yes. Yep. Uh, Ether 12, right? Ether 12, 27. That he will show us our weakness. And he gives us weakness that we may be humble. So when we see that weakness, when we when our pride is broken, Then we need to continue to press forward in faith. And then he can make weakness strength. He can take the old man, the old man, carnal man, the dead man, and give him life. Yep. De dead because of sin, right? Yep. And life because of Yeshua's atonement when we come under his covering. That is correct. That which which covenant is defined by Torah. Yep. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride, and arrogancy and the evil way. Interesting how pride and arrogancy and the evil way, while they're set while they're listed separately, it's all in the same thing of evil. And the froward mouth. Do I hate? No, I, I do want to bring out he hates these things. He just does, does not like them. He hates them. And so I so that is definite. It's not a stretch to, conti to consider that a commandment not to be proud, not to be arrogant, not to go in the evil way. Or to think we know better than God. And speak, and so speak, to speak against God. That's the forward mouth to speak against God and His ways. Yeah. Okay, Matt. Second Nephi twenty eight fifteen. Uh, oh, let me get that. Get rid of the. Just hit escape. There you go. Okay. No, you don't have to highlight. Don't okay. Highlight. Okay. 
all the wise and the learned and the rich that are puffed up in the pride of their hearts and all those who preach false doctrines and all those who commit whoredoms and pervert the right way of the Lord. Woe, woe, woe be unto them, saith the Lord God Almighty, for they shall be thrust down to hell. The proud, those who teach false doctrines, those who commit whoredoms, they're all lumped together. And it's clear that those who commit whoredoms have broken a commandment. But those who preach false doctrines have broken a commandment. Therefore, those who are puffed up, puffed up in the pride of their hearts have broken a commandment. They're, to not be proud is a commandment. Right. And in here, it's listing uh, three things that are very common that causes pride, right? Yep. Wisdom. Knowledge or learned, like Greek knowledge, right? Mm -hmm. And riches. Th those are three very common things that make people proudful or puffed up, right? right. Yep. So, yeah. And, and, and that, and you know, I think there's not a one of us that's susceptible to, that's not susceptible to this temptation, especially when we've taken the effort to learn a lot of things about something to learn a lot about something to, to we're, how many of us are it's tempting to each one of us i think to yeah. get puffed up in the pride of our hearts and our knowledge yeah right right when, when we're learning it, it, it's 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 a tricky thing to still be opening open to um listening to arguments versus thinking i i know it all right now especially on the religious or 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 in the aspect of Yahweh, there's a difference between um, listening to someone's false revelation and versus listening to someone who can bring it out from the scriptures. Because someone just with an opinion, uh, for someone Everybody. who knows the scriptures, that may not mean much, and that I can understand that. But if they can bring it out from the scriptures, uh, we need to still uh, at least consider it, right? Yes the 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 main yeah the uh if somebody can break it that's always for that's always been for me uh one of the uh and it's become for me one of the chief things uh in determining whether or not somebody is blowing smoke up my uh, blowing smoke up my bum <laughs> uh and that is can they show me in scripture why i should take what they're saying seriously um and so that's uh, it's a real it's a I think it's a really important thing. Okay, doth not behave itself unseemly. Now, unseemly means behavior that is not fit or becoming. Behaving oneself unseemly is behaving in ways that are not fit or becoming, uh, uncomely, unbecoming, indecent. Oh, don't we have ten commandments that tell us? How not to behave unseemly. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I don't think I'm going to make everybody read all Ten Commandments. They, I think you're pretty well aware of what they are. But they're here. Especially, and, uh, you know, and so th these Ten Commandments were given to us to show us how we can love God and love our fellow men. And so... And thus behave in ways that are seen, that are decent, that are comely, a good report, and praiseworthy. These are the things that we should seek after. So that sounds like uh, one of the, I forget which one, but uh, Articles of Faith, which is kind of quoting Paul, right? Yep. After all things of good repute, I, I don't know. It's been a while since I've had it. Indeed, we may say that we follow the admonition of Paul. We believe all things. We hope all things. We have endured many things. We hope to be able to endure all things. If there be anything virtuous, uh, uh, there be anything uh, virtuous or good report, maybe good, virtuous, lovely of good report or praiseworthy. We seek yeah. after these things. But, you know, you know, just because it did come from the church doesn't mean that it's 
Absolutely. It, 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 it was penned by a prophet of God. Right, right. Um, that, that didn't come from the Elliot Church. That came from Joseph Smith. But yep. which he was basically quoting uh, Paul, right? Right. And also, and so to go go into that, we're gonna. I want to go into Romans seven because this is how this actually goes into that relationship be, between the law and defining what is seemly and unseemly. Romans chapter seven verses ten through sixteen. Let's see, Zach, you want to read that for us? And the commandment which was ordained to life, I found, I found to be unto death, for sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sin. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. For that which I do, I allow not. For what? For what I would, that I do not, do I not. But what I, but what I hate, that I do. If then I do that which I would not, I can, I can send unto the law that would, it is good. So he states, he states twice here that the law is good. But the law shows us our sin. It shows us what, how we need to repent. The it shows is, us what we need to correct, right? Yeah, it shows us what we need to correct. The law is spiritual. We, when we are, when we're, when we're not living on, when we're not living in the law, are carnal. We are of the dust. We are the dust of the earth. But uh, the interesting thing is, is that Yahweh, Yahweh, breathed the ruach into the dust and the commandment is the ruach HaKadosh. so one, one thing I, I think i'll add real quick that i think will help um illuminate uh ben's statement there is that satan's domain is the dust and we all have sinned and for those who will listen to yahweh he will take us out of satan's domain into his domain that is correct A.K.A. taking us out of the dust, right? Because that is mm -hmm. his domain. And, and breathing into us the life of the Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh. You know, the interesting thing is the word Ruach is both breath, spirit, and wind. It's all three. And so when God breathed into Adam's nostrils the breath of life he gave him a ruach his, his, his life was brought in yeah and as we talked about earlier the nose has to do with trusting right mm -hmm. and how do you know that you can trust someone is because of the behavior or the law that they keep right that's correct are are do they have a double standard or do they have the same standard law for themselves as they do for other people? And that's when you can know you can really trust them or not. Right. Yep. That's it. That's it. So that, uh, so this is, uh, so that, so that's for that part of charity. Behaveth itself not unseemly, but behaves with, but live, but lives by the holy behavior, as shown us in the Ten Commandments and in the other commandments of Torah, uh, which uh, which are which were commanded even to the Gentiles 
in uh, Acts chapter 15, that uh, they observe kosher, kosher law and not worship after the Amorites, after the manner of the Amorites in whose land they dwell. Yeah. So, and so that is the, uh, so that is, so, so that is what it means to not behave unseemly. It's to take upon ourselves the, to take upon ourselves the behavior of little people. And to walk in a newness in the spirit. Seeketh not her own. Uh, let's, uh, this is Numbers chapter 15, verse 39. I do believe there was a, uh, you have, uh, you have that, you have oh, that. Yeah. So I, eight, I can give you the link. Me, that. Yeah, that, shoot me the link in the, uh, yeah, chat. yeah. Uh, I'll call it up. So that way we can just see it in a chiasmic form because we, we both have grown to like that, right? Yep. There okay. you go. Click on that. Okay. Click on that. There we go. And we're down to the place. Can you do control F? That might be quicker. Or there it is okay. right there. All right. So here we are, numbers 15, 37 through 41. This is actually the uh, word of the Lord to the children of Israel regarding a certain clothing item that they were to wear. It's called seat seats. Uh, they yeah, are tassels. Fact, I'll, I'll just show you mine. So Yeah. They are tassels worn on the four corners of your clothing, of your yeah, of your garments. Yeah. And so I, I I don't here, let's see if we can there. You can there you can see it right yeah no and so this this goes into uh why it is that they were supposed to wear them and so we'll, we'll just uh we'll just read through these verses here and you'll see the importance of re in relation between the seats and not seeking after your own and the lord and, and Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, "Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make that they make them fringes, or tzitzi, in the border of their garments, throughout their generations. Throughout their generations, I will repeat that again. Throughout their generations, this means that we that we are still supposed to be doing this today. It should we wish to be considered Israel and under the covenant." And that they put and on... also just to go with that. Um, I, I don't know if you want to look at the dictionary definition of generations right now or not, but one of the definitions is a family or a group of yeah. people, not necessarily uh someone just born, but a, a, a group of family or, or of believers, right? Yeah, that that is also a generation that they may put upon the fringe. That 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 they and that they put upon the fringe or the seat seats of the borders a ribbon or cord of blue. Now Stephen's seat seats have blue. Mine have blue, um, and it yeah. shall be on. You, you, if you look close enough, you can see uh, a strand of blue in there. It's a light blue, so you might not be able to see it. And I have small ones. Um, ben made his out of yarn. And so let they're me, a little easier uh, to let see. me go let me go get my seats. Um, okay, so let me pause. Oh wait, I can I can use that. It's right there. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, so mine too. Yeah, go yeah. Uh, so Zex made them. So I, I, I did a little class helping people how to tie them. Um it, I I I just do a simple four um braid so you so you I, can I do clearly... a modification off the karate tradition um anyways so you can clearly see the blue in the seat seat and you, you can see it you can see it very clearly nicely there in uh zach's as well yeah so you can clearly see that yeah the dark blue sticks out a lot more than the light blue that i have 
<laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think it also helps that your um, strings are thicker than mine. <laughs> it, it does. I, I think that does help too. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, okay. The, uh, you know, one thing I, I just want to say, and now if you notice, uh, I'm injecting a little bit, but it's it's on on your at your hip, okay? So a hips have to do with your agency, and the commandments help keep our agency in check. Just as the tizits point to the commandments, as you'll we'll see in just a minute as we read a little more, mm -hmm. to help keep our choices agency in check. Okay. And that they may put and that they put upon the fringe or the seat seats of the borders a ribbon or cord of blue, and it shall be to you for a fringe. In this case, or a string, that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments or law. Oh, okay. It's not just some. All. All. The commandments. We don't get to pick and choose. Right. <laughs> it's in fact at baptism we covenant to keep all of Yahweh's commandments, not some of his commandments. Okay. Which is still significantly less than the number of rules and laws that we live by every day under the law under the law of the land. Uh, yes, that's significantly less. In fact, um in in one sense, it's uh so go to the top and go uh right click or double or middle click Torah. Uh, up on the menu, it, it's there's two commandments: love Yahweh and love your neighbor. So it's on the far right, um, and oh. all the and the ten on a top oh, yeah. far right. There you go. Um, and then these ten are explaining you how to do the two, mm -hmm. um, and everything else is underneath the ten. So scroll down. Okay, just keep going. I'll tell you when. Yeah, uh, keep going. I, I like chisms, if you can't tell. <laughs> there, there we go, are. right there. So uh, five have to do with how to love those who authority of us, as in Elohim and our parents. Uh, and then another five have to do with how we love our neighbors or our peers, right? Mm -hmm. And this is how Yahweh wants us to love we don't get to decide how we want to love ourselves we right. do it his way that is if we want to be his followers his children right right okay okay so and remember all the commandments or law of torah of the lord and do them that you seek not after your own heart and your own eyes. Eyes have reminder. to do with desires, right? They, remi they are a reminder that we are not to seek after our own. Right, right. And, and, and this goes on with when Eve saw the fruit, she desired it. She desired it. So eyes have to do with desire. Okay. Yep. After which he used to go a whoring, that you may remember desire and do all of my commandments and be holy covered under Yahweh's garment unto your God Elohim unto your Elohim I Yahweh your Elohim which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your Elohim I am Yahweh your Elohim now one thing I did want to bring out how Egypt uh, is a border in fact the, the land of Israel borders Egypt and he took him out of that and brought him into a new border. Yep. Um, these tzitz remind us of our fences. And they remind our us protections of protections that if we go over, we can go down the cliff and die into hell. Right. Yep. So that is. So that is that. Um, that is. I think uh, I think that's actually uh, that's pretty good on seeketh not our own. But let's what should we seek? Deuteronomy four twenty nine. Uh, Christy, you want to read that? 
Yes, let me go back to the screen here. Okay. I can't, I see. Okay, there we go. But if from thence shalt, or, okay. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. So that's who we should seek. And that's how we should seek him. With right. all of our heart. It's not a passive right. thing. No. It, it, is, it takes all your heart, might, mind, and soul. This is a big deal. And that after and that after entering into covenant. And if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart, and with all thy soul. This is a promise that we can enter into his rest. Yes. If you're going after after Yahweh with a heart minded, half heart hearted mind, I think I said that right. Anyways, um, you won't find him. You have to no. do it with all your heart. It's something that you really have to want because there will be everybody will try to take you off of it. And don't and don't go a whoring after these folks. Regard them not. Regard not them that have familiar spirits. Neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. Don't seek after familiar spirits. Don't see. Don't look to wizards and mediums. Look to the Lord. Or or your um, astrology daily forecast, and, and you know, because that that comes from wizardry, right? Yep, astrology. Which is a form of wizardry, but anyways. And so, it, and so we see that so far we, it, it, and so far there has not been a single part that has not that does not trace back from Torah. Yeah, so far so part everything pretty, in uh, First Corinthians thirteen is a list of Torah commandments, right? Yeah, is not easily provoked. This is an attribute of Yahweh. And uh, this is from the words of Nehemiah when he's rededicating the temple, when he's dedicating the second temple. And refused to obey, neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them, but hardened their necks, and in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. But thou, God, but thou art a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and of and of great kindness, and forsookest them not. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Psalm one hundred three eight. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. And mercy is forgiveness. Yeah. And if we we have to be slow. This is again that that thing being slow to anger. Not being easily provoked. I mean, if we're offended by every, if, if we're offended by every word, we'll spend all of our time offended. We won't be useful. Yeah, this is where um, you got to use some wisdom on knowing what to uh, address and what just to leave alone, right? Yeah. yeah. The wrathful man stirreth up strife, but he is slow to anger, appeaseth strife. He that is slow to anger is better is better than the mighty. That's even the mighty in scripture bashing. And he that ruleth his spirit than he that taketh the city. And so, and while I speak against scripture bashing, we should preach from the scriptures. Right. So there's, and this is not easy to to teach, and it comes with experience and whatnot, and, and helping people in particular circumstances. But there's a difference between scripture bashing and contending for the faith, right? Right. And a large a large part of that is knowing. And a large part of that is figuring out when somebody's actually still reasonably responding to what you're putting forward, not just the Right. If they're not going to, if it looks like they're not going to learn from you, no matter what you say, it's probably not worth putting any effort into it. Go, go 
go find someone who will listen. Mm-hmm. Don't just go out and show how smart you are because we really are not. Go find someone who will listen when they're shown that they're wrong by the scriptures. Not our personal opinions, but by Yahweh's word, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. We're supposed to teach by the word, not our opinions. Okay. And so thinketh no evil. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. So I think maybe it might be important here is how do we define evil? It's breaking Torah, right? Yes. Um, evil is breaking Torah. Right. Because Torah defines what is righteous and what is evil. And it's by his laws or commandments or in other words for that. Or another one is statues and judgments. That's how we know what is good and evil. Also, uh, another one here. How long shall I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I've heard the murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. This is before the Lord swears in his wrath that they shall not enter into the land of promise. Just before that. Yeah, they were speaking against Yahweh Elohim. And that not, is evil. not trying to understand why he's doing this or what I'm supposed to learn, but they were saying that he was evil, right? Yep. And, th- and that comes from thinking evil. Yeah. Um, when thou shalt beget children and children's children, and ye shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves and make a grave in image. Here he's describing the process. Of what happens is people get get indulged in thinking evil, or the likeness of any living thing, and shall and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God to provoke him to anger. The fact that our thought our evil thoughts are always reflected in our evil actions. Mm-hmm. And so, think no. Thinketh no evil, therefore does no evil. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death, because he hath spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage, to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. Now, since we cannot put people to death, what we can do is cut them off as useless branches. As Joseph Smith yeah. thought. So as Joseph Smith thought. It, it just just on, on this little tidbit here, um it is the civil uh government that does is the only thing that has authority to put things to death. Even in Yahweh's kingdom, there is a church and then there's the civil government. It's only the civil government that has the right to put people to death. The church has the right to excommunicate. Okay. Deuteronomy 30, 15. See, I have set before thee this day life and good, the law, Torah, and death and evil, everything else. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, the, so how do we think no evil? Well, meditate on the law continually. Uh, and I just want to uh, clear, meditate up a little bit because uh, Eastern religions and New Age will uh, use it a little differently, but it's thinking upon the law, right? right. Trying to figure it out. Yeah. Uh, what what should I have done according to the law in this situation where I'm, you know, after the fact thinking about things and how to be better? It, it's trying to write it upon our heart to, to understand it and knowing how to use it in the moment in the future. Cause we're, we are uh, not growing up in the law. Uh, we have to learn it right. Where the mm-hmm. Jews, they learned the law, but they don't accept the Messiah in general. Right. Right. So charity rejoiceth not in iniquity. In fact, they as people and as people i like this in leviticus 26 39 through 44 which talks about 
Leviticus 26 talks about the consequences of sin, the and uh, being brought back under and being brought under the covenant once again because um, the Lord has not forgotten His people. Um, they that are left of you shall pine away in their iniquity in their enemies' lands. And also in the iniquities of their fathers shall they pine away with them. Pine, sorrow. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers, which their tres with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, that they have also walked contrary unto me, so one, one thing, I think the part of the reason why it's important to confess the iniquities of their fathers is to show that they have no part in what these false traditions or iniquities that they grew up around with their fathers in, right? And so this well, is... Going back to earlier, how we talked about how uh, Yahweh punishes the sins upon the children up to three or four generations. It's because they keep the same sins. If you're confessing your father's sins... Uh, it's showing that you're doing your best not to do the same sins that your father did. So if they shall confess... I think Matt wants to say something. Yep. In other words, they are... That's exactly it. They're confessing. They're acknowledging that it is actually a sin. They are not living in the <laughs> land of denial. Yeah. If they shall confess their iniquity and the iniquity of their fathers with their trespass, which they trespassed against me, that also they have walked contrary unto me. Those of us who need, this is something that's really important for us to remember as we repent and return to Torah. And that I have also walked, con and that I also have walked contrary to them and have brought them into the land of their enemies. If then their uncircumcised hearts be humbled, and they then accept of the punishment of their iniquity, then will I remember my covenant with Jacob and also my covenant with Isaac and also my covenant with Abraham will I remember and I will remember the land and the, the land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her sabbaths while she lieth desolate without them and they shall accept of the punishment of their iniquity because even because they despise thy ju my judgments and because their soul abhorred my statutes and yet for all that when they be in the land of their enemies i will not cast them away neither will i abhor them to destroy them utterly and break my covenant with them for i am the lord their god the facts of the matter are All of us have sinned. Except for one, right? And except for one. But how many of us are willing to circumcise our hearts? Offer the broken heart, contrite spirit. Acknowledge our fault. Acknowledge Torah. Acknowledge that we need to walk in it. That we need to, and that we need, and that we cannot expect any blessing from the that we cannot expect any blessing from the hand of the Lord unless we are walking in it. The, the key word being expected blessing. And even when we're walking in it, we can expect the blessings that are given in it. But if we are willing to humble ourselves. Rejoice not in our, and, and rather than rejoice in our iniquities, humble ourselves because of them. The Lord will protect us because he has declared it in his Torah. So one, one thing I'll just add real quick. Um, I, I think been finished. Yeah, I'm pretty um, close to on that. Yeah. Sorry about that. Sometimes it's a little tricky on overline, but um the, the thing that uh, during Jeremiah's time that caused them to be cast out was that they did not keep a Sabbath, right? It was the, the land Sabbath, but that was got, got them kicked off the land because that is Yahweh's sign or seal between us and him. 
And here they're talking about the Sabbath. And I do think it's important to note that we are here meeting on a lunar Sabbath, right? We are we are meeting at the Lord's appointed time as given by the Lord's appointed time pieces. The sun and the moon, as in Genesis uh, 1, 14 and 16, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. What do we rejoice in if we have charity? We rejoice in the truth. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of all the people, able men, such as fear God, men of truth, hating covetousness, place them, such over them to be rulers of thousands, rulers of hundreds, rulers of fifties, and rulers of tens. The man of charity is who is supposed to be chosen as a ruler. He who lives in the law. And the Lord passed by before them and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. So we are to rejoice in Yahweh. So one thing I'll say real quick, back to Exodus uh, 18, that yeah. promise is uh, repeated in Deuteronomy 28 and 29, uh, mm -hmm. that those who um, keep Yahweh's law, they become a ruler, just as Daniel did, right? Daniel kept the law and they became a ruler. And then and also, as also Nephi did. Yeah, uh, in First Nephi, it's brought out that Yahweh told Nephi, son of Lehi, that he'll become a, lure, a ruler uh, when he keeps Yahweh's law, Torah, right? Yep. Deuteronomy 32, 4, he is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment. The God of truth without iniquity, just and right, is he. And here, we're supposed to love God. We're supposed to rejoice in, in Yahweh and in, in Yahweh our Elohim. Therefore, shalt, thou shalt love Yahweh thy Elohim and keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments always. That's in Deuteronomy 11.1. 1. So when Yeshua cited this as the first and great commandment, he was actually quoting scripture john 1 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god made more clear in joseph smith translation john 1 1 in the beginning was the gospel preached through the son and the gospel was the word torah and the word was with the son and the son was with god and the son was of god we rejoice in Torah because it was with, because it was with the, because it was with uh, the Son and with the Father in the beginning. So, if those who want to look, uh, Ben and I put uh, JST John one in a chiasmus. If anybody wants to take a look, but yeah, John fourteen six, Jesus Yeshua saith unto them unto him. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeshua equates himself with Torah. If you rejoice in the Lord and you say, if you say you rejoice in the Lord and you do not, and you say that you do not have to keep Torah, you are a liar. You need to repent. So Yeshua was the perfect personification of Torah. As in, he kept every jot and tittle in everything he did so and that Torah, we have the perfect example to go by to know how to keep Torah. And Torah is his mind and will. Yes. Recorded. And, and uh, that's from Lectures on Faith 5 that um, talks about it that way, right? Yep. I Yeah. And so, yeah, that's... Uh, and beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. All things is equivalent to Torah. So he beareth Torah, just like Aaron bears the judgments upon his heart. Right, and judgments come from where? Torah. Torah. 
And uh, so all things is an equivalent is an equi is an equivalency to Torah. Right. Uh, 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 I, if you want, I can show that from the Tanakh. I haven't done it in other places yet, but I have a lot of verses that shows that all things is Torah. But okay. I, do I need to, I need to, I need to take a potty break. So I'll just hand this over to you while you show that real quick and okay. I'll be right back. All right. So go ahead. Uh, stop sharing. Yep. So uh, let me get up a window. We'll put it on this one. So, oh, actually, wrong thing. I'm, <laughs> I need to do this window. Silly me. Okay. So, Torah. And then all things. So, um, oh, let's make this a little better. Okay. So, there, here's a lot of things where, yeah, it's, there's a few verses. Here's my my favorite ones up here at the top, okay? But Deuteronomy uh, 8.18 is one of my favorite ones that shows that all things is Torah. And then just FYI, um, underneath all is the Hebrew word uh, 3605. We can go look at that in Bible Hub in just a minute. but. Um, Christy, are, are uh actually I think you oh no it was Kelsey that left. Christy, are you willing to read uh, Deuteronomy eighteen eighteen? Sure. Yes. Okay. I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren, like unto thee, and will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I shall command him. Now this prophet that they're talking about that Moses is talking about right here is a quote from Yahweh. He's saying, I will raise up Yeshua among the Israelites and I will put Torah in his mouth, right? And he will tell them all that Yahweh told them to do, right? All things is another place that they say it um so uh i'll read deuteronomy 8 1 through 3 and all and i have uh hebrew 3605 just a point that it's the same hebrew word because sometimes they they translate it a little differently in the king james but anyways all the commandments that's torah which i command thee this day shall ye observe to do all of them, not just some of them, just like the baptism covenant, we covenant to keep all his commandments, just not some of them, that you may live. Now, uh, the opposite of living is death. And when in Hebraic thought, when we sin, we die. Because the wages of sins is death, as in separation from Yahweh. And in Adam's case, that's why we physically die. But I, if, I don't know about you, but I have sinned. So I, I've caused my own physical death in addition to Adam. So uh, I didn't need him to do it because <laughs> I did it myself. But anyways, and go in and possess the land or the you know, promised land, heaven, which Yahweh swore unto your fathers. Yahweh told the prophets before us that we can go to heaven and they the prophets are trying to teach us how to get there and thou shalt remember everything all which yahweh thy elohim led thee these 40 years in the wilderness so 40 has to do with the testing period so are you going to do the things that yahweh taught you while uh, here in mortality right mm -hmm. to be humble to seek after him to prove thee to test thee the purpose of life is to see if we'll keep yahweh's commandments and all things that he commands right abraham three something 25 maybe anyways to know that what was in thine heart 
Or, in other words, what do you really desire? You, you say you want to be like me. Now show it, right? Show it in your actions. Show it even when it's hard. Don't be like people that say, I want to be like Yahweh in their mouth, but in their hearts, they're far from it. Whether thou was keepest his commandments or not, right? That's why he's proving. He's proving mainly to yourself because he knows already, but you don't. Because I, I don't know about you, but I don't know everything. <laughs> Despite what some people say, I don't know everything, okay? And so I, he, I need to find out myself if I will keep his commandments or not, even when it's hard. Even when it's hard. Okay. And he humbleth thee and suffereth thee to hunger. And then he fed thee with manna, which is physical and spiritual, right? Which thou knowest not. You didn't know what it was. You didn't understand it, but you still ate it, right? I mean, manna itself that's, means what is important. this? Or what was, or what is that? Is it this or that? But anyways, same thing. They didn't understand it, right? They didn't know what it was. Did you want to say something, Ben? And it's Torah. That's Torah. It's the bread from heaven. Right, right. But when you start eating it, you don't understand it. No, most people, yeah. You don't understand it right when you start. You know, that for, That's why most people think that the Hebrew peoples are weird. Uh, are are weird uh uneducated um uh, the, the back then or that they were back then that they were uneducated very very simple and not capable of uh complex thoughts right well and i i think this is and when you look because at the, the spiritual meaning of manna it really brings out what's going on with torah at the same time right Mm -hmm. That's why I think that's why it's here, and that's what I'm trying well, to bring you out. You know, it, it's really interesting that people, scholars, will state that they do that they don't think that the idea of a redeemer was prevalent at the time. It was prevalent in Hebrew society, and that's just not true. No, in fact, I mean, I don't know. Since Ben's back, I'll let him decide. But I could sidetrack where throughout the Book of Mormon, it talks about that all the prophets testified of the Messiah. Yep. Now, the Bible has been modified, but even just beyond, even with the modifications, you can see that with the types and the shadows that are throughout all the scriptures. Like, um, uh, the one from the 8th of this month, we went over how Alma 17, how Ammon is the type of the Messiah and during his mortal ministry. It's once you have the key or the, the basic understanding, you can see it over that whole chapter and many chapters after. We I just I'm just long winded. So we ran out of time. Sorry. <laughs> but anyways, hopefully it was insightful for people. Um, but anyways. Yeah. Uh, ne neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that thou dost not live by bread alone. So this is where it's switching from just the physical only to the spiritual. But by every, now this every is the same Hebrew root behind this all here, that proceedeth out of the mouth of Yahweh doth man live. A.K. So, not die and gain or get the punishment of sin, which is death, right? And so what we see here is very clearly that Paul's admonition to charity is an ad, it, it, or his uh, his extillation of charity is an extillation of what? Yeah, it is. So with you back, I, I could keep going more, or do you want? Uh, I, 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 let let me press let me press this on to let me press this on to its conclusion. Okay, all right. So let me stop share. You go ahead and okay. take it back. Uh, go and here we are. Okay, and so 
from there, uh, so we can see that that Paul, the what Paul was extolling, is Torah. And Moroni repeats Paul's extolation, and it's uh, and it's really powerful because charity means to keep Torah and take care of those who take care of those who can't take care of themselves acting in justice and truth and not taking advantage of your neighbor and charity suffereth long and is kind and envieth not and is not puffed up seeketh not her own is not easily provoked thinketh no evil and rejoiceth not in iniquity but rejoiceth in the truth beareth all things believeth all things hopeth all things beareth Torah believeth Torah hopes in Torah endures through Torah Wherefore, my beloved brethren, if ye have not charity, ye are nothing. For charity never faileth. But I, I'll just say, Yeshua, to go along with that, Yeshua stated it would be better that you had not known me, right? As in the perfect personification of Torah, right? Mm -hmm. Wherefore, it has in, you're nothing because it would have been better that you had not yeah. had known me. Yep. Wherefore, cleave unto charity, obedience to Torah and its injunctions, which is the greatest of all, for all things must fail. But charity is the pure love of Christ, and it endureth forever. And whoso is found possessed of it at the last day, it shall be well with him. You can be found in possession of obedience. You can be possessed by, you can, you can give your heart over completely to the mind and will of God and have it fill you completely. And that is, that is what he's talking about. To give your will over to Yahweh. To take his will, his yoke upon you. Torah is his yoke. So if if it's okay, can we sidetrack on Matthew 5 for just, I mean not 5, Matthew 7. The last chapter of the Sermon on the Torah, I mean on the Mount. Yeah, um, sure. Because I think that it'll help drill in how charity yeah, so what, is obedience. For us, okay. Scriptures, Matthew, chapter seven. Yeah, we can do that. And it's near the end. Uh, if you want to do search, it's Lord, Lord, right? Okay. Uh, it's near the bottom. Uh, Lord, Lord. Go find on page. So no, no, click that top one. Find on page. No, no, that. I, okay, I got to click Lord, Lord. There. Okay. Oh uh, shoot. Okay, that screwed up. So then click on well there. We can just do it this way. Yeah. Uh, right there, twenty-two. Twenty-two. Okay. Okay. Yeah. There. We... Verses twenty-one through twenty-three. Really? Yeah. Yeah. So, not everyone that saith unto me, Yahweh, Yahweh, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So, it, it, here in, in Moroni 7, it talks about how if you're not doing these things, you're nothing, right? Mm -hmm. And here's it in, in Yeshua's Probably most famous sermon and the least understood, okay? Mm -hmm. it, sermon on the Torah. That here he's saying, if you don't deal, do Torah, you're not getting into heaven. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Right. And so I'm trying to bring out how keeping the commandments, when you know what charity is, in the actual original Hebrew language means righteousness. That goes along with this. Many will say unto me in that day, 
Yahweh, Yahweh, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name cast out devils, and in thy name done many works? And this is what he says. Then I, Yahweh, profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, he who do not keep Torah. Charity is keeping Torah. If you don't have charity, you're kept out of the kingdom. Just like if you're not righteous, you're kept out of the kingdom. So, or depart from me, right? Yeah, and I'd say that was a pretty good sidetrack. Anyway. See, charity is the pure love of Christ. And uh, it's the pure love of the Messiah. And the Messiah really defined it well for us. If you love me, keep my commandments. It's See, I, I mean... I, in today's it, society, it, it makes no sense for charity to be the pure love that he has and have it be useful for us. It's pure love that we have for him that causes us to keep his commandments, that makes it that makes it so that his atonement can be expedient for us. Right. So that way we can have sanctification, right? Yes. So in, in society, they they like to make love to be like it's lust. They they don't say it this way, but the way they present it, love is lust, right? But in the Hebrew Bible and the Hebrew scriptures, including the Book of Mormon and the DNC, love is equated with diligence. Mm -hmm. As in doing what you say you would do. So. And, and when we get married... We make covenants with each other that we're going to help each other and take care of each other. That's a so, commandment. Just so, like how our relationship with Yahweh is likened unto a marriage. So, if you love me, keep my commandments. Now, the converse is also true. The opposite is also true. If we don't keep his commandments, if you don't, Torah, if you don't keep Torah, then you don't love him. John chapter 1, verses 2, John, first John 2, verses 3 through 6, and hereby we do know that we know him if we keep his commandments. It's not that if we uh, uh, know what they are and list them off, but then don't do them, right? Mm -hmm. Just if we shema, listen and obey and do. Yes. He that saith, I know him, and keepeth not his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. But whoso keepeth his word, in him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also so to walk, even as he walked. And it's possible. And now, we're going to thing I do think it's important to say and bring out even as he has walked. Yeshua yeah. kept Torah. There, there's not there's not any real debate about that, right? I mean, some people might, but it's it's really yeah. frivolous. He kept it's it. just a, it's what they'll debate over is which definition of Torah he kept. Right, right. Um, but they'll also then say they did it so we don't have to. But here is in the New Testament after his death and resurrection. And I'm bringing that point on purpose. And uh, if, if there is one of the apostles who actually understood in any degree much about Yeshua, it was John. Yeah, he was the beloved, right? Um, yep. But he brings out that we need to do as he did. And he did Torah. So, you've you've heard me use intercollect interconnectedly the terms spirit and Torah. I'm going to show you here why. The fruits of the spirit. The fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Why? So one because thing just before right. you go on, Matt, I think we want to, at least I want to bring out how um, fruits of the behavior, 
of how yep. Yahweh tells us to behave <clears throat> is love. Because another definition of spirit is behavior. And the Hebrew word behind that is going to be, I have a hard time saying it. Anyways, I'm not even going to attempt it. Ruach. Yeah, Ruach HaKodesh. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be that. Okay? <laughs> so, uh, uh, maybe if you get me drunk enough, I'll attempt it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm, drunkard, <laughs> I'm, I'm drunkard of Ephraim. Challenge. We have um, a challenge. Yeah, yeah. But um, <laughs> that also points to Yahweh's law, as we talked about earlier in the yep. recording, right? Yep. So the fruits of the Spirit love deuteronomy 11 1 thou shalt love the lord thy god keep his charge and his statutes and his judgments and his commandments all way you mean not just sometimes this is a fruit of the spirit well I, I think that's a mistranslation so i think that's supposed to be sometimes not always uh, uh no that's it's always i'm sorry Stephen. i think you need to burn that bible that you're reading well, uh, I like it. It makes me feel warm and fuzzy. <laughs> It'll make you feel even more warm and fuzzy when you burn it. Okay, uh, It'll 19. definitely make me warm, for sure, right? <laughs> Leviticus 19.18 Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. The new gospel is no different than Torah. The second when great the, commandment. The Lord did not give the two great commandments to replace the ten. The ten were given to explain the two. Right. Uh, so, they, I, I mean, I think we've already shown that. No, I, I know what you mean, but I, I do want to bring out that the good news, the gospel, is Yahweh paid for our sins. Because if he hadn't, uh, because we had sinned once, as Second Nephi 9 brings out, even if we keep it perfectly, but we deny Yeshua, we'll still become demons unto Satan, right? We need him to get past the curse that we put on ourselves. And here's the interesting thing. The fruits of the Spirit, the fruit of love, is a commandment. Yeah, it is a commandment. It's commanded. The fruit of love is commanded. And how do we love? According to the Ten. According to the Ten. Well, that, as in Yeshua stated it in the New Testament, thus hangs all the Torah and the sayings of the prophets. Right? Yeah. Joy is commanded. Deuteronomy 28, 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and gladness of heart for the abundance of all things, the curses of Deuteronomy descend because they didn't serve the Lord with a joyful heart. Right. Uh, and also it goes along with Moray 7, uh, early in the chapter. <laughs> yeah. if we need to. Um, but if you do it for the wrong reason... It's counted as evil to you. Thus, you'll yep. get the curses because it's not righteousness, right? And peace. So much, so many of the commandments, and so much of Torah revolves around this idea of peace. If you offer a peace sacrifice of peace offerings unto the Lord, you shall offer it at your own will. And I will give you peace in the land, and you shall lie down, and none shall make you afraid. And I will rid evil beasts out of the land. Neither shall the sword go through your land. This is this is both a physical, literal, and spiritual promise. Yep. The Lord lift, and this is the blessing that the Levites pronounce upon the children of Israel year by year. This is a part of it. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Why how and why does he give them peace? Because they're keeping Torah. Wherefore say, behold, I give unto him my covenant of peace. So just to go along with that, in the New Testament, uh, Yahweh told the apostles that when they're keeping his way, they'll get comfort or peace, right? Yeah. Deuteronomy, 
this is a really interesting thing. When the Lord's commanding the people to go in and take the cities, what it, he first tells them to offer them peace. When thou comest nigh unto a city to fight against it, then proclaim, uh, then proclaim peace unto it. And it shall be, if it make answer of peace and open unto thee, then it shall be that all the people that is found therein shall be tributaries unto thee, and they shall serve thee. And, it shall, and if it will make no peace with thee, but will make war against thee, then that shalt thou besiege it and take it and destroy everything in it, and yada, 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 all that stuff. But they were first to offer that all the branch of peace. Right. So this also goes along with the um, the promise that Yahweh gave unto Abraham, right? Those who bless thee, I will bless. Those who curse thee, I will curse. Yep. And thou shalt not seek their peace or their prosperity. All thy days forever. This is talking about the inhabitants of the land. They, you, we are not. To, if we wish to have Yahweh's peace, we cannot be at peace with the world. All right. Well, uh, Yahweh's peace is different than the world's peace. Is basically what that's saying, right? Yep. If he say thus, it is well. Thy servant shall have peace. But if he be very wroth, then be sure that evil is determined by him. So, uh, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. There. Commandment. Seek peace. All right. Well, the way you get peace is by keeping the commandments, right? That's right. In yeah. fact, if you look into this, Psalms, it even says that by depart from evil, which means keep the Torah. Yep. Keep but the meek shall inherit the earth. The meek are those resting in Torah. They're not the doormats. They're those resting in Torah. Correct. And shall delight themselves in an abundance of peace. Mark the perfect man. Behold the upright, for the end of that man is peace. Mark him. Mark the perfect man. Mark Yehovah. Right, right. Who Behold uh, kept Torah Yehovah. perfectly. That's what makes us perfect. Is whether yep. we keep his law or not. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Long suffering. And again, we've been over this one pretty well. Gentleness. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation. And thy right hand hath holden me up, and thy gentleness hath made thee hath made me great. Now I, Paul, beseech myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence, who in presence and base among you, but with it, but being absent and bold toward you. So nope. uh, when, when yeah. we're being bold about telling what is truth, we still need to be gentle about it, but still be bold at the same time. Um yeah. And with that, he will protect us, right? Yep. Absolutely. No power or influence can or ought to be maintained by virtue of the priesthood. Only by persuasion, by long suffering, by gentleness and meekness, and by love on pain. Yeah, I, I think that personally, I think that's probably the clearest one that states it as a commandment, right? Yep. And that's a commandment to keep Torah, by the way. Yes. Long suffering, gentleness and meekness, all these things. A commandment to charity. Yeah. Love on pain. Goodness. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long suffering and abundant in goodness and truth. Psalm 21 3. For if thou preventest him with blessings of goodness, thou settest a crown of pure gold upon his head. Psalm 25, 7. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions. According to thy mercy, remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. All, what do all these things have in common? Who's good? Yahweh. Yahweh. Be ye there at Matthew 5, 48. Yeshua, before his ascension, be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. 
Matthew 19, 17, also before the ascension. The young man asks, the young man calls him good master, Jesus, and Yeshua answers him and says, and he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is Elohim. But if thou wilt enter into life, oh, what? Keep the commandments. Yeah. So w one thing I do want to bring out here, um, that the reason why Yeshua said, why callest thou me good, is because uh, he didn't believe he was God. Not that he Yeshua is not God. Elohim because he is but the one asking the question did not or actually the one who did not the statement that he was good did not believe that he was Elohim so it's like uh, why do you call me that you don't think I'm Elohim third Nephi 12 48 there and this is after his this is after his ascension and after he's res resumed his uh resumed his status Therefore, I would that ye should be perfect, even as I or your Father who is in heaven is perfect. Lectures on Faith 5.2 And Yeshua is called the Son because of the flesh, and ascended in suffering below that which man can suffer, or in other words, suffered greater sufferings, and was exposed to more powerful contradictions than any man can be. But notwithstanding all this, he kept the law of God, and remained without sin, showing thereby that it is in the power of man to keep the law and remain also without sin. We are commanded to be perfect. We are commanded to be good. Yep. And, and not to be so. Uh, oh, and not to be so oh, sorry. And not to be so eventual. We're commanded to be good. Immediately. Right. And we can be immediately upon making the decision. And uh, as Nephi brings out in 1 Nephi 3 7, Yahweh doesn't command anything unless he prepares a way for us to do it. Right? Exactly. So since he commanded us to keep all Torah, it's possible to keep all of Torah. Faith. One of the, the another one of the fruits of the spirit. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love Him and keep His commandments to a thousand generations. This is an expression of faith. Trusting God with diligence, yep, and keeping His commandments. Psalm 31, 23. Oh, love the Lord, all ye his saints, for the Lord preserveth the faithful and plentifully rewardeth the proud doer. But the Lord preserveth the faithful. Uh, so that's the, the faithful are who are justified. All thy commandments are faithful. They persecute me wrongfully, help thou me. Behold his soul, which is lifted up, is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. So that, that soul which is proud and is lifted up in his own righteousness, his soul is not upright. But, nope. those, who, but those justified live by Yahweh's faith. Well, those those proud, those lifted up, are making themselves a law unto themselves and they can't be justified nor sanctified. Thus, uh, can't be saved, right? Because you're saved by the law. Yep, and here we go. You just, you just set me off. Okay. <laughs> Doctrine and Covenants, section 88, verses 34 and 35. And again, verily I say unto you, that which is governed by law, by Torah, is also preserved by law, Torah, 
and perfected and sanctified by the same. That which breaketh Torah and abideth not by Torah, but seeketh to become a law unto itself and willeth, and willeth to abide in sin, and altogether abideth in sin, will not keep Torah for anything, cannot be sanctified by law, neither by mercy, justice, nor judgment. Therefore, they must remain filthy still. So I, I just want to bring out the reason they can't be saved by mercy is because mercy is forgiveness. But Yahweh tells us more specifically in the Book of Mormon, but in the rest of the canon also, that there is a requirement to be forgiven. Broken heart, contrite spirit, which means repenting. Keeping, repenting, returning to Torah. Yeah. Putting your, submitting your mind and will to the mind and will of Yahweh. I have a quick question. Yes. Um, this is kind of a lot, kind of along this exact um, topic here. Um, here, let me, oh, let me start my video here. Um, so in, let's see, in Second Nephi twenty five twenty three. So you want to go get that up, Ben, so we can see it? Yep. Let's go Book of Mormon. Blue one. Second, second Nephi, 25, 23. Yes. Um, let me look at this. 23. Okay, so the last the last phrase, after all we can do, that would that would be referring to that more or less, yeah, right? So all that we can do is come under Yeshua with a broken heart and contrite spirit. That's all we can do. Okay. Because mm -hmm. that's um like this is very basic, obviously, um, basic doctrine. Hey Ben, um, let me have the screen. Okay. But um sometimes and I feel like I have a grasp on it most of the time, but um, I just kind of, I started looking at this a little bit this week because I listened to that. Um, I listened to that commentary talking about the deceptions in the, in the chosen, which was great, but you know, they threw in those few little jabs at the book of Mormon. And that uh, was what yeah. Well, they, they don't study the book of Mormon, so they don't really understand it. Yeah. Um, and I, and, and, and actually, if you ask them, is there something I need you to be saved? They'll tell you yes. They, yeah. they'll, they'll at least tell you that you need to accept Yeshua and nothing else. And and if they're honest, they'll probably tell you you need to repent also, right? Yeah. yeah. That's all that we can do. In fact, even the Book of Mormon even says that. So and, and this is where... When you're trying to make someone look bad, you'll take things out of context and you're not really going to study it to try to understand it. Now, yeah. at, at, to some degree, I don't blame them, right? Because they have a lot of a bad examples what Mormons are. So why would they want to, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But at the same time, there's a few of us that tried to educate them and they just ignore but let's look at Alma 24, 11, that tells us what all we could do. So it even says that all that we could do, that's all things you can do. It's just saying it's slightly different. You want to read this one, Christy? Yeah. Yep. And now behold, my brethren, since it has been all that we could do, as we were the most lost of all mankind, to repent of all our sins and the many murders which we have committed and to get, and to get, god to take them away from our hearts for it was all we could do to repent sufficiently before god that he would take away our stain so there's twice in fact here's a, i just noticed another one it is uh all we can do is repent right now i i will add to that that uh come under his covering too right because to repent and get the the mercy, forgiveness, we need to come under his covering, except that he is the promised Messiah. But in here, it tells us all that we can or could do. So repent. Mm -hmm. and, it, and come under his covering, which is 
baptism is a witness that we've repented and promised to keep all his commandments, which is what repenting is, is to keep all to keep his commandments from now here on on out, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's all you can do. And, okay. and if you really ask these uh, other people, can we be saved without accepting Yeshua? They'll tell you no. So there is something that you have to do. Mm -hmm. But because yeah. they don't like the Book of Mormon, they'll they'll twist things against it, even despite the fact that they they themselves they need to do at least one thing, accept the Messiah. And I'm saying that you need to do two things, but when you read the scriptures, it does that too, because you need to endure to the end, endure to the end, and you can't do that without keeping the commandments, and that's returning to them, which is repenting, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. So it's all you all you can do is repent. Yeah, and so I have more on this, and but... I would, and I would, the only thing I might think about adding to that would be forgive, but. Because it's, right. we, what, we are, it's, and it's the, the flip side, it's the flip side of what right. we expect. It's the flip side of what we want from God when we repent. We want forgiveness. We need to extend forgiveness. Right, right. And, and that is uh, that is repenting because part of repenting or keeping the law is forgiving others, right? You can't love someone and hold a grudge against them as going back to the... Levit Levit ah. I'm having a hard Leviticus time right 19, now. 1917. Yeah, yeah. But you, you can't love someone and hold a grudge against them at the same time. 1918. Okay. Yeah. And so okay. that means you have to forgive. Yes, I, I agree. All right. Thank you. You're I welcome. Nation. All right. Go ahead and take it back, Ben. Okay. Um, let's get this thing wrapped up here. Okay. Let's go back into here. Okay. So meekness. And thy majesty and in thy majesty ride prosperously because truth and meekness and right because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And thy right hand shall teach thee terrible things. Now that's an interesting thing. That doesn't sound like a doormat, does it? Because no. truth and meekness and righteousness meekness is resting in torah it's living walking breathing in torah so now, the, the world will make meekness look like a a weak cowardice person but to um to show kindness and not not niceness as in going off what we learned earlier today but mm -hmm. to show kindness to those who are being rude crude mean and whatnot to you actually takes a lot of strength it is the weak person who will give in and do the same thing yep uh, and now the man moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth and we know that moses and we know that moses kept torah and lived and walked and breathed in it the meek shall eat and be satisfied. Oh, what a wonderful bit of imagery there. With Torah being the bread of heaven, the meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise Yahweh that, that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. The meek will he guide in judgment. The meek will he teach his way. So guess what? If we want to receive great personal revelations regarding the kingdom we need to be meek we need to be resting in torah but the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace and then yeshua in the beatitudes quoted his ancestor david blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart. His heart 
and mind, of course, is Torah. We need to learn of him and take his yoke, his heart, his mind upon us. And then we shall find rest up for our souls. Now, isn't that what all of us want? We want to find rest onto our souls, but we're not going to do it by, uh, uh, we're not going to be using it, we're not going to do it by using the name of Yeshua or Jesus or whatever you want to call him to justify our sins. No, it, it, it's not. Uh, in fact, if we're trying to do that, we're actually going to get um, less happy than we were before, right? Yep. And temperance, moderation, particularly, particularly, particularly habitual moderation in regard to the indulgence of natural appetites and passions. Patience, calmness, sedateness. And we are actually commanded to be still. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Or amen. As very much similar meanings. There. But know that the Lord hath set himself apart, hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Receive the will of the Lord. Write it upon your heart. This is my continual plea that we look into ourselves, we see where our heart and our mind are not in alignment with the heart and mind of Yahweh as given to us in the scriptures, that we repent, that we seek not to justify our own iniquities, but that we seek to exalt only the Lord. For the Lord will exalt those who are godly. I leave he, that. He'll abase the proudful and wicked, right? Yep. And he will abase the proudful and wicked who seek to use his name to stand and to, and to stand in their sin as if it was holy. Such are liars and hypocrites, and you need not. Take teaching from them. It, you need to pick a good teacher, just as uh, 2 Nephi 28, 14 brings out, right? One who will actually obey, abide by the word and practice yeah. the spirit. Live the fruits of the spirit. Live the commandments of God. Walk in the newness of the spirit. And we should seek to do so ourselves. One rule, one law for, his, for Yashavel and for the stranger that is within her gates. I'll leave this message with you in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'm going to pause.